<clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we will continue our session uh, of machine learning. So we have continued this discussion uh, in continuation with the last uh, lecture. So uh, when we come towards the overview of uh, machine learning, uh, the first thing which we will discuss over here is the concept regarding the classical supervised learning. <clears throat> the classical supervised learning, we will see how we can use the linear regression models, uh, how to fit linear regression models in various situations uh, to predict uh, or to forecast values in future. Uh, neural net approach, which is again AI based approach. And uh, then we talk about later on the support vector machines, decision trees, nearest neighborhood algorithms, and lots of other related learning methods. So all this discussion is based on uh, the, of course, the theoretical concepts and linked with certain applications, because if you know uh, how the regression will work, we need to know how it can be applied, where it can be applied. Let's suppose if we use neural net for learning process, then how we can use that neural net approach, uh, where it can be applied. So it depends upon our learning model, depends upon the application, that depends, depends upon the, uh, the problem domain. Uh, the, there are various uh, learning probabilistic models as well, uh, and uh, that is called probabilistic classifiers, in which we have prob probabilistic classifiers where we can use logistic regression uh, and other uh, concepts. Uh, because uh, we are dealing with problems where we do not have always certain situations. So we have to deal with situations where there is uncertainty as well. So for that purpose, we need probabilistic classifiers. We need to know what is the probability of selecting this particular uh, item or a node to a particular class. So obviously in that concept, the calculation of those probabilities and class probabilities, probabilistic classifiers has to be identified. Unsupervised learning, for example, need to know the density estimation. Um, unsupervised learnings normally apply to problems where we need to determine information from the data itself. Uh, and uh, sometimes we use uh, clustering method uh, or a technique which is uh, quite suitable because we don't know exactly how uh, we can proceed or how we can uh, extract information from the given data. So the learning process is based on um, certain methods of clustering and then we'll try to identify what is common between them, what uh, and how those clusters are formed. And in that way, uh, we will introduce learning into that particular problem. Based net learning, again, uh, it's uh, based on the uh, classical Bayes theorem. And whenever we talk about Bayes theorem, it means we're talking about conditional probabilities. And normally it is represented as probability of A given B. So there are many problems where the uh, probability of occurring an event is depends upon the probability of another event which has already been occurred. So if this is the case, then we have to introduce the Bayes net learning approach, which leads to Bayesian networks. Then, of course, uh, one way of uh, finding out or to model situation is the time series problems or time series applications, where we have a data based on time series. Let's suppose uh, the uh, price index, which is also represented in terms of time series data. Then we talk about dimensionality reduction, how you can reduce the dimension. 
that is important so whenever we are dealing with complex situations so to reduce the problem uh, we have to go for some reduction mechanism so that we can proceed with the example or to comprehend the situation then we talk about gaussian models and the language models so i'll proceed further so our goal is work is to provide a framework for understanding all the detailed contents to come and why it matters that is our goal so learning why and how uh, we talked about learning in the previous lecture why learning is important learning is important to know that uh, what my actions will do in the next situation so how i have updated my knowledge uh during my previous actions uh in a given environment so how we can update that information obviously that information is being updated based on certain principle based on certain critique and that is why you can in, uh, improve the learning so once you have that learning process in it means that uh, it is quite obvious that you will improve your decisions because that is the major goal so there are various ways and mechanisms by which we can introduce the learning into machines uh, like we do uh, in humans we have various ways of learning <clears throat> we acquire knowledge uh, we uh, consider our past practices uh, we also logically analyze the situations and um, uh, we reason and therefore will be able to apply learning in our cases so similarly if uh, we want to introduce that learning process into the machine then obviously we have to go through with certain uh, methods certain techniques or established frameworks so one way of doing is is the supervised learning uh, so that is that so whenever we say a supervised learning approach normally we talk about the classical one where it is simple and you can build a hypothesis and sometimes you can build the accurate hypothesis and you can find out you can <clears throat> train a machine to do a particular task and that task is being done with 99.9% accuracy so classical approach of course it is simple uh, otherwise we go for the probabilistic approach as well and whenever we go for the probabilistic approach it means we are talking about finding out the likely hypothesis not the accurate hypothesis because here it is important to know that um, how much i am correct so how much certainty is there so the value reflects the amount of certainty which is there and therefore it is called likely hypothesis so the chance of occurring an event and obviously therefore that hypothesis may be true or hypothesis may be false so our belief system is basically based on the probabilistic values as we are dealing with uncertain situation and if you go for the bayesian approach which is actually uh, depends on the basic base principle and in that concept what we do is we update the belief so every time we takes an action based on the given actions <clears throat> what I, what what is happening that we update our belief the values will be changing okay the values may accumulate and <clears throat> you proceed until you achieve the desired learning goal so the bayesian approach is based on <coughs> updating belief in hypothesis so these are the differences between the classical approach which is the accurate hypothesis the probabilistic approach where we look for the likely hypothesis and the bayesian approach which is based on the belief update in the hypothesis <coughs> so we need to uh, work with the data so without data it is not possible so we need 
we will see various examples um, during this lecture and the lectures which are coming afterwards that we have to deal with the data. So data is the main source. Uh, so once you have that data, then and obviously that relates with certain applications. So let's suppose if we have a data regarding the consumer trends, so we have an application to find out the behavior analysis of all those consumers or customers. If we have a data of a network traffic on a given network, then our application might be to see the traffic flow, uh, the um, overall um, network strength, uh, the interconnectivities, so on and so forth. Similarly, if we are dealing with the data regarding uh, satellite system, then of, of course our application will be different. We talk about weather, then we're talking about applications which are related to climate maybe, to, to weather maybe. So it's uh, how we can use that data for, for our own purpose, for our own goal. That is very important. And nowadays data is not that difficult to, uh, uh, to, uh, to get because bundles of bundles of data is available. Uh, you talk about any source and you will find out the data. The most important thing is that how you analyze that data, how you organize that data, how you clean that data, how you can use that data to, so, to, to for example, to in, a, in your learning model, how you can acquire knowledge, how you convert it into a knowledge-based system, how machine can take benefit out of it, and then we can perform the certain task. So that is important to know. So therefore, when whatever we learn uh, is applicable, whatever we study in this course is applicable. So, so there's a need to understand those concepts and then to apply and to see how it can be used or how it can be used to train, uh, uh, train a machine to perform a certain task. So obviously it requires the expressiveness. Expression is of how you will describe that knowledge, how you describe various assertions, how you describe that uh, data as well, the relationships as well. So therefore we need expressiveness, okay? And apart from expressiveness, there is a cumulative learning process. Uh, so whatever we learn, what we do, we link it with whatever we have learned earlier on. So it's a cumulative learning process. It is not like uh, once we learn and then we forget, no. It's a cumulative learning process. Every time we come out with a new experience and all those new experiences basically come, uh, basically linked with each other. I just gave you uh, one example um, regarding uh, a famous chess game, Deep Blue. So the, in that game, the learning was introduced and that really helped the Deep Blue to play with players at various levels and updated the knowledge base. So when it is ready to play with uh, the world champion of that, uh, at that time, so that learning curve helped the deep blue to achieve that excellence where that deep blue defeated the uh, world champion. It does not mean that machine defeated the human. But the important thing is that how human has introduced that learning uh, skills or that learning algorithms into that machine so that machine can be able to, to, to win against the world champion. So that is very important to know and we'll see that uh, uh, how in various applications that can be applied. So it is always a cumulative learning process. So we can say that a computational process for improving performance based on experience. So what machine learning is, is computer pro a computational process. Why it's a computational process? 
because we have to compute we have to calculate we have to evaluate various parameters based on various principles we have to check check the correctness we have to check the we have to calculate the cumulative values we have to calculate the performance parameters so it's a it's a computational process for the next important thing is for improving performance so what what whatever we are doing whatever method we are applying the purpose is what to improve the performance and of course when we improve the performance based on our experience then that process will really help to make such machines which can perform the task even better than humans do so it is up to us how we can formulate the problem how we can model the problem the baby assailed by eyes ears nose skin and entrails at once feels it all as one great blooming buzzing confusion of course because if you see uh, the uh, the baby you can say that there are lots of lots of uh, sensors are there there are eyes there are ears nose so every time every time they are experiencing new situations moving from one place to another moving from one room to another so looking at various objects looking at various colors listen various voices li listen various tunes <laughs> and smell various things so there are lots of lots of things which are happening even if if you are just 1 year old 6 month old where you have uh, no skills even then you adapt various things you take input from your given environment and you start reacting it reacting to the situations so it is all very complex so learning is essential for unknown environment that is when the designer lacks omni science so learning is important but it is essential for unknown environments so wherever the environments are fully known wherever the program uh, the problems are very structured then it has nothing to do with the learning because it is very structured for example uh, in a company uh, you want to calculate the salaries of the employees so if you want to calculate the salary of the employees or you want to run a payroll application there is it is very much structured all the information is given the environment fact is clearly defined so in that situation the learning is not uh, the key because the the problem is well structured all the condition and actions are well defined the importance of learning is normally comes whenever you have you have uh, semi structured or unstructured uh, situations where you do not have the complete information or you can say where you have little information regarding those environments and then you have to pick out how you have to react in the given environment we used to drive we learn drive so every time when we go for driving we 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 are actually in to an environment which is not known to us not known completely to us so what we do we we accommodate ourselves in that particular situation and we try to perform our actions based on the given environment so again it's a learning process so every time when you are in a new situation gives you gives you the uh, uh, the uh, possibility where you can uh, learn and you can update your knowledge and when i say when the designer lacks omni science yes omni science uh, means uh, that you have knowledge of everything so 
in real life when we are dealing with various problems we do not have uh, all the information with ourselves for example there are uh, take the example of a stock exchange let's suppose people are interested to invest in the stock exchange there are various companies which help you to provide you knowledge regarding those companies so that you can invest in those companies so they have knowledge uh, they have some data with themselves they have data sheets where they can say that how companies have performed for the last quarter the last year last two years last five year so how their value of their shares is going up or down and how it will do in future so but it does not have a complete information so there are lots of lots of parameters which are not there which are not well defined sometimes the pattern of going up and down is not uh, that linear so therefore you have to come out with various kinds of uh, uh, of uh, learning models and then you apply those models to find out what is the best scenario in the given situation similarly if you talk about learning uh, let's suppose uh, the learning concept in medical science here also there are lots of lots of things which are there that is again lacks the omni science for example we want to train a machine to find out the um, to to go through with the ct report and find out the the exact intensity of the cancer which is initiated in a particular organ so how machine can learn how machine can find out and how you can identify it so so in all these problems whether it is related to the road network to the grid network to uh, medical science and any other discipline then uh again you can apply that learning model and obviously that will work that will work accordingly to the situation so we can say that instead of trying to produce a program to simulate the adult mind why not rather try to produce one which simulate the child if this were they are subjected to an appropriate course of education we would obtain the adult brain presumably the child brain is something like a notebook as one buys it from the stationer's rather little mechanism and look lots of uh, rather little mechanism and lots of blank sheet that is the famous saying by alan turing uh, who is the pioneer of uh, ai and uh, the famous we, we always talk about the famous turing machines and we study that concept so uh, people say that uh, a child uh, when you are a child uh, you learn a lot uh, in the first 3 or 4 years uh, actually um, you are able to understand various things and um, actually you uh, your personality is in building process at that time and most of the things uh basically you learn during that period so instead of uh, simulating the adult mind we have to work on the child mind so because that is uh, again fresh for a child everything is new so obviously it is like a notebook and uh, and a little mechanism so the child respond normally but there is a very strong observation of a child so so we have to work in that manner how we can train such an individual or a person so learning is always useful as a system construction method that is expose the system to reality rather than trying to write it down so learning is what is a useful as system construction method <clears throat> how to construct the system so learning is useful while we talking about the construction method that is expose the system to reality rather than trying to write it down so we have to come out with solutions which are more nearer to reali reality uh, we can sort out that particular problem to solve that particular issue or uh, or situation so it really help you for system construction 
so therefore we need to understand that how that learning is introduced uh, this is a news uh, which was published in 2011 in telegraph and <clears throat> it's a big news at that time just uh, wanted to know uh, what happened actually the new ibm microchip to rival the human brain is into was introduced so ibm has developed silicon microchip that it says mimic how the brain works and rewire themselves in response to the new information so that is the first time it did and since then lot of work has been done in this domain so it is very important to know that how our human brain works so how that uh, when we talk about the structure of neurons when we talk about the structure of neurons uh, uh, the perceptrons and the information flow within that our system and how we can reach out to a particular decision <clears throat> whether those uh, decisions are long term based or a short term based or spontaneous reactions even so you see that how that uh, how our system works so there is lot of work done to understand the concept of human brain and try to link it with with the development of microchips such that we can perform or mimic a certain task so still lot of work is to be done <clears throat> in this area but it is very important and relevant domain so if we want to understand that how learning is introduced or how uh, we can define a learning based agent you have to understand this model uh, which is very important to know how it works if you want to define a learning based agent then you have to understand this model which says that the input is taken from the environment obviously agent has to work in a specific environment if you talk about a traffic agent uh, for controlling lights that has to work in a particular environment where we have the crossroads where we have the vehicles where we have the zebra crossing where we have the pedestrians <clears throat> if we are talking about uh, a learning based agent used for stock exchange <coughs> stock exchange application then the given environment is what is the stock exchange the companies their shares spending so on and so forth similarly if we want to introduce this in a chess which is a game again the environment is different so so learning based agent also takes input from the given environment based on the various sensors and uh, those uh, sensors takes that input and whenever that input is being taken it means that you have a new percept so whenever you have a new percept you have to respond according to the given percept now that uh, whatever the percept you have that percept will send to a critic which is an important element within that learning based agent the critic has the responsibility to evaluate the given situation in terms of the performance standards so whatever the application we are talking about that input has to be related with the performance standards how it has to be reacted what will be the action so the performance standards are there with respect to the given application and it is combined it 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 is actually checked with the given standards by the critic and give the feedback to the learning element that feedback to the learning element means that there is for example a change in the percept or change in the learning mechanism so if that change is in the learning mechanism a learning goal is created and that learning goal will help 
the problem generator to execute the experiment and perform and see that how it will uh, how it will happen if i adapt that particular change so after the problem generator that information or that changes is sent to the performance element and performance element exchange the knowledge with the learning element and we perform the certain task and at the end the performance element execute that task so every time let's suppose if you have designed an unmanned vehicle so every time in the given switch situation the unmanned vehicle has to respond whether there are no vehicles on the road whether there are there is a rush whether there is a deadlock whether there is um, uh, the um, pedestrians whether there are the signals that uh, or even there is a weather change that uh, agent has to react to the given situation uh, similarly um, if we talk about other type of problems let's suppose we talked about uh, the traffic controller or we talk about the stock exchange problem or we talk about uh, the uh, the uh, 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 the grid network problem so it and in any problem obviously that learning agent has to has to apply has to react even in the uh, even uh, you take the example of a chess so in every given situation of a chess the the machine has to respond your algorithm has to respond and obviously uh, your your response is basically is dependent on your previous actions so that is how we the the learning based agents can be designed and learning can be introduced into the given system now it's up to you what method you apply which method you will use what type of sensory devices you will opt for what type of feedback is required what is a given performance standard in a given particular domain or a problem so it all depends upon the application itself but you have that model and you can adapt that model so the key questions what is the agent design that will implement the desired performance that is a key question how you design an agent based on the given uh, model which uh, that will implement the desired performance let's suppose if i say to develop uh, such a chess uh, game so how you will design that uh, chess agent which can achieve a certain performance standard if i ask you to to make a system which can distinguish among various objects so how you will design such an object such a, a machine based algorithm which can easily distinguish among various objects improve the performance of what piece of the agent system and how is that piece represented so we need to know how to improve the performance because we need to improve the performance if we if our learning agent or our learning model does not make sure that the the performance is improved then it means that you cannot introduce the learning so improve the performance of what piece of the agent system and how is that piece represented it is also important that how you will represent that so what data are available relevant to that piece for example you need to know what type of data is required in particular do, do we know the right answers so let's suppose you want to build an application uh, for uh, for the detection of detection of uh, some sort of uh, fracture or uh, or pain in a bone so how you you can how what data is required actually to know that so you you need x rays but what type of data is required you have images but you need that particular data for example if i know to invest in in in, in uh, the stock exchange company so what data is required to know that i can make 
the correct investment or the best optimal investment so that the, I can take the benefit out of it. So there I need the data to have uh, to have uh, a good um, uh, traffic control system. I need to have that data, maybe the data regarding the vehicles which are there on the road. So we need to know the frequency of vehicles coming uh, from various dimensions. So that really helped me to, to make such an application. So if I want to work on to optimize uh, the grid network, so I need to have that grid data, the flow data. And obviously we need to know what knowledge is already available. How you define that knowledge, how you use that knowledge to, 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 to comprehend the situation. So we need to acquire the knowledge domain. So we are building such systems. We are, if we are building learning based systems, how you can define that knowledge, which is already there and how you can use that knowledge for your own purpose. So there are various uh, um, agent uh, designs and you can see that there, there are various agent designs their components, representations, feedback, and knowledge is given. So let's suppose we talk about an alpha beta search. So alpha beta search is based on the evaluation function. So how you will, what is the major component is the evaluation function. So we have to evaluate what are, what is the value of alpha? What is the value of beta? So if we go for the alpha beta search, normally it is the, that search is used um, for games uh, to identify the min and maximum value wherever we have the opponents. So we need to know how that maximum minimize it, uh, is achieved. So representation, it is represented in terms of linear polynomial uh, where we can, have, uh, we can have a tree as well. And their progression, it, progression itself is a linear progression. And the feedback mechanism is basically in, ter uh, in terms of win and loss. So we need to know whether it is by achieving this search, whether there is a win or there is a loss. And because it is applied to the game, so rules of the game should be there. And obviously these various signs which represents various aspects of that particular game. So rules of the game is the knowledge in that particular design problem. If uh, you are interested in logical planning agent, you need to know the transition model. The transition model based uh, how uh, the transition took place, how one, from one event to any other, uh, we move from one event to the other because we're talking about logical planning. So logical planning has a sequence, the sequence of events. How you determine the sequence of events, you need to know the transitions, how one event can be transformed to the other. So if you have that component with yourself, you can represent this in, in the form of successor states because there is the concept of succession that because from one event, we can move toward the other event. For example, let's take example of an ATM. So there, there, are, there are various events. So one event is linked with the other event and there are certain possibilities when you move from one event to the other. So there are various kinds of action outcomes in, in such cases, because when you proceed logically, so the, there are various actions which are there, which are the outcomes. So you can perform, let's suppose you can perform a certain thing at a particular state, but you cannot perform a certain thing at that uh, particular state. So that is means that you define various actions at various events. So what are, what is the knowledge required? Various uh, available actions, what are the possible actions, where, what you can do. Let's suppose we talked about ATM, what you can do. You can change your pen, you can withdraw your money, you can transfer your, <clears throat> your money, you can change your password. You can uh, uh, give uh, your authentication uh, and lots of other things which you can do. So there are various kinds of agents which are there. So when I will talk about the supervised learning, so it means correct answers for each training instance so for supervised learning, we have to train the machine as well. So we need to have a correct answers for a training instance. 
that is uh, the objective we want to achieve and uh, this is uh, possible when we train the machine on various training instances or a training data and the other concept is regarding reinforcement learning so in the reinforcement learning it is based on the reward sequence so you ba basically after um, uh, whenever you apply that learning you actually go for rewards for for and normally we represent this as a reward sequence so every new time what we do we again introduce the uh, instance of learning into the given mechanism and then we identify so not necessarily there we have the correct answers so because we have to reinforce the learning um, so therefore that is uh, not always correct unsupervised learning just make the sense of the data you cannot group the data because it is unsupervised learning so there you have to make the sense so there are various things which are with you and now you have to de de develop the sense of that particular data let's suppose if i give you um, let's suppose uh, 5 million nodes of uh, traffic of uh, a certain network again what and i ask you to determine the the learning patterns how people connect with each other and so on and so forth so again it's unsupervised learning so because you have that data with yourself and there is no such division among that particular data uh, no separate categorization so what you have to do you have to apply certain methods to find out some mechanism uh, and then you transform it into a learning that is why it is called unsupervised learning for example with this data you apply clustering method and then try to identify that how that clusters are formed and how that clusters uh, are, uh, are formed and not only formed but how various nodes are interacting with each other what is the cause and how it will happen in future so we have these clusters today how these clusters will be in future so with this uh, i conclude this session and uh, i will post uh, the next session soon uh, on your youtube uh, on my youtube channel thank you if you have any further queries please let me know